Your art is important, even if it's meaningless. Hi everyone, my name is Madame Berry. I'm an artist and game developer, and Doodleberry is my art channel. And I want you to know that objectively meaningless art is important. If you like this video and want to see more, make sure you're subscribed. I'm trying to increase my upload schedule from once a month, and you can help me upgrade my studio and make filming easier by heading over to my Patreon and supporting me there for just a dollar a month. There's a lot going on in the world right now, and it's scary, it's upsetting, and it's polarizing. To be clear, this video is not about any event in particular, and no matter where your views lie, I think you can probably agree that we live in incredibly divisive times. Sometimes we need respite from all of this. It's so easy with social media to be flooded with news all the time about every single thing, and to feel like you have to care about all of it. I see so many call-out posts like, why is nobody talking about this? Or, I see all you out there talking about X but not Y. First of all, it's possible to care about both X and Y, so call-out posts like that just serve to stir anger. But that's not what I want to actually talk about. It's easy to feel like you need to be in a constant state of fighting for your rights as a person, or the rights of friends, and family, and neighboring people, and don't get me wrong, it's incredibly important. But it can also be paralyzing. One person's brain is not meant to take in all of the information that we're exposed to. It's not built to bear the weight of an entire nation or world, and it's impossible to put your whole effort into everything all the time. I generally think it's important to stay informed on the current goings-on. Willful ignorance isn't going to help solve anyone's problems. However, the news and many people's social media feeds can be incredibly stressful and depressing, and there's absolutely no shame in the act of self-care that is removing yourself from a situation that causes you pain. Taking action to make the world a better place is important, but if you're depressed and anxious to the point of being paralyzed due to being bombarded by bad news all the time, you aren't in a state to take action in the first place. There are so many people who think Art without some form of suffering is meaningless. They think it's a commodity, a commerciality, it's not real art, that if you're just drawing pretty things, then there's no reason or meaning for it. An artist can be made to feel guilty for doing something unimportant when they should be caring about the suffering of everyone around them. But the truth is that pretty art and meaningless art provides respite. When you post the illustration of a generic pretty girl surrounded by flowers, and it scrolls across someone's page, that could be a temporary shelter from the storm of political vitriol that might be the rest of their social media feed. If your art makes someone happier and less anxious, and yes, this includes yourself, then it ceases to be meaningless. 
We all need respite from time to time, and art can be part of that. Also, to talk about this illustration that I'm making right now, this is my piece for day one of Inktober. If you don't know what Inktober is, it's a 31-day inking challenge created by illustrator Jake Parker with the goal of improving one's inking skills by creating an inked illustration every day for the month of October. I'm following the official prompt list, so this piece's theme is poisonous. I drew a generic pretty girl, of course, surrounded by hemlock, which is poisonous and I believe invasive in the United States. I predominantly used a Copic multiliner, and then I also mixed two of my Higgins inks together to create a teal color, which I applied to the background. I've had these inks for at least eight years, and I don't normally work in ink, so it's nice to have a reason to do so. I really like them, so maybe I'll try to break them out more often. I then went in with some Kuretake Ganzai Starry Watercolor to add touches of gold. I don't have a gold ink, and the rest of this piece is ink-based, so I consider it fine to use a small amount of watercolor to add a metallic accent. Personally, I think as long as the main component of the piece is ink, it's still within the spirit of Inktober. I wanted to tie all of my pieces together with a visual theme, so this is going to be the process that I use for the rest of Inktober. The paper I'm working on is a Mose Art hot pressed watercolor book. Since I knew I was going to be working with both fine liners and ink washes, I wanted a smooth paper that would be able to take a moderate amount of water. This book works well for that, though the pages do warp a little. I bought this book specifically for Inktober, and honestly, I fell in love with it. The paper is so nice. It's a little on the thin side, but it works so well with fine liners and inks and watercolors and even Copic markers. I'll leave a list of all of my supplies linked down in the description. I will be doing a full flip through of all of my Inktober drawings at the end of the month. But if you want to see my illustrations daily, head over to my Twitter or Instagram. I'm trying a new format with these videos. Not every video is going to be like this, but I want to introduce some topics of discussion from time to time. Let me know in the comments how you find respite. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.